if you think about how uh, you know the uh, the way that you know data is hosted in the cloud today, you use these extremely high performance, high capacity servers. The reason is you want to actually be able to serve um, high you know high performing um, and data intensive. Um, applications from those servers, right? You can't do it off a computer at home. The other thing is if you're replicating both data and computation, your consensus is limited by the slowest node in the network. So there's no, re so you really want all of your hardware to be absolutely uniform across the network because it can only run as fast as the slowest node. That is Arthur Falls. And this is episode 45 of the Blockchain Pro podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 45 of the Blockchain Pro podcast. I'm Adriana Bellotti and today's guest is Arthur Falls. Arthur is the person who inspired me the most to create this podcast. I met him, it would have been 2017-18 in Sydney and he was in town for a conference and I caught him interviewing some of the local community members for his then podcast The Third Web and I went home that night, I started listening to his podcast and I thought to myself, I want to create a podcast too. Fast forward a few years, here we are, episode 45 with the inspirational Arthur Falls. Let's go. Hi Arthur. How's it going Adriana? I'm pretty good. How are you? Not too shabby at all. So you're beaming in from New Zealand and you're in lockdown as well? Yeah, we're in lockdown, actually. I just did a, uh, did a kind of roadblock slalom to get back to my house from up north, sneakily sneaking past checkpoints and, uh, and talking my way onto the ferry, yeah, to get back to my house on the lovely Waiheke Island. But I'm here now, so life is good. Good on you. You made it. Awesome. Let's uh, go back in time and talk about how you started your professional life. Uh, in crypto. Um, uh, but even before crypto. Before crypto, yeesh. Uh, before crypto, well, you know, I grew up on an orchard in New Zealand and um, picked apples, stacked boxes, did all that stuff, traveled a bit. And uh, I think I was a salesperson for a while. And I think I was a salesperson for a while and um, at Harvey Norman, which you'll be familiar with. Um, spent a bunch of time in the wine industry in Australia, worked on, you know, Hamilton Island? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I was a handyman on Hamilton Island for a while. Oh, nice. Were you, were you ever part of any of the sailing stuff over there? No, no, unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't get to partake. I spent all my time um, fixing sinks and drains and things and <laughs> okay. old, old electrics. Um, yeah, so I did that. And then I wound up um, uh, via a dishwashing job getting into lobster fishing in Maine, then found myself um, working as a removalist again in Melbourne and then an arborist in Wellington. None of that was very good. Went back to Maine, started an arborist business, did some more fishing for a bit. From 2014, I've been into Bitcoin in 2013, 2014, I um, was trying to figure out how to get involved because it was not technical. So I decided to make a podcast, made a podcast beyond Bitcoin. Following year, Ethereum had come out. So maybe August 20, uh, 2015, I made another podcast called uh, The Ether Review, which ran for a couple of years. And... I thought, you know what, if I'm doing this, I decided I was thinking of becoming a saturation diver because it's the highest paying job for the shortest training time. And it sounds a bit exciting, saturation diver, right? Oh, kind of diving. Oh, and so it's when your uh, body becomes completely saturated with uh, nitrogen. So, you know, normally people who have done scuba diving will know that there's uh, a maximum point at which you don't want your tissues to become nitrogen saturated because it means it takes a long time to decompress on the way to the surface. And presumably by that time, you'd run out of air. So in order to not get you know, the bends. So, you know, saturation divers spend weeks underwater in diving bells filled with helium. And um, yeah, it's, it seemed like a cool job. Everyone told me not to do it. Um, 
because it tends to not have very good health outcomes for people. But, but anyway, I, I didn't do that. I chose in 2014, I was like, no, just do your laboring jobs and, um, and pursue, keep pursuing crypto. This looks like it's going somewhere. Yeah, then um, early 2016, I thought to hell with it. I'm going to send Joe Lubin a message and see if he wants me to work in, um, at Consensus. They were advertising for an office manager. I told him, hey, mate, I've never been in an office in my life, but um, it can't be that hard. And I'll do my podcast out of your office so you'll get extra, extra coverage. And if you just pay me really well, because I'm doing all right, you know, if you pay me really well, I'll come in. It'll be great for all of us. And uh, he said, do you think you'd be capable and competent to run an online media outlet? And I was like, yeah, totally, which, of course, was an abject lie. And it was proven false. Uh, but, <laughs> but I like to think I had a, I had a positive effect uh, while I was at Consensus and, and used the resources that uh, was made available to me through that uh, organization to, you know, to further the, um, the blockchain and kind of crypto fields. And um, while I was there, I ran into, I knew Dom a little bit because I'd interviewed him a few times. He had the best ethos of anyone building in the blockchain, understood that this had to actually be a product that had its uh, capabilities and, uh, and performance and feature set given to it by external user demand, right? You can't just come up with a technology and say, hey, look at this cool, cool technology. You have to say, what's a problem in the world? How are we solving it? is there a user for this? You know, is there a pre-existing user for this or are we trying to make a whole new thing? Anyway, so I was always really interested in Definity. Consensus was boring. I moved on from there and um, Dom brought me on at Definity, the Definity Foundation. So I worked for the Definity Foundation for um, about a year and uh, burned out by that stage because I think I did a world tour at um, Consensus and then I did two for Definity. You know, I mean, while I was working for Definity, I did 60, pre more than 60 presentations in 15 countries. And I mean, I was a shell of a man by the end of it. And then, yeah, and then came back to New Zealand, bought a sailboat, renovated it, um, still renovating it, boat, boat projects. Uh, and, um, the best. and, <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> and then Definity finally launched, finally, finally launched. And that brings us up to date, which is um, now I'm trying to build out that ecosystem. Definity's ecosystem. Exactly. So how is Definity different from, you know, the other main chains? Well, when I think of, say, Ethereum, you've got this piece of technology, interestingly, that was not based on anything that anyone asked for, but has found itself a kind of settlement layer for a new kind of um, financial transaction, right? And it's very expensive to use. Um, Solidity is a hard programming language to, you know, develop applications with. So it really is only suited for financial grade stuff. You know, you do have these anomalies where, you know, you've got like games and stuff, but the truth is that unless it has a, a value bearing component, there's just no reason to use something so heavyweight, slow and expensive. You know, you do see this NFTs, right? It makes sense because they're, they're expensive. Uh, you know, they are like value bearing instruments. Same thing with various cryptocurrencies and tokenized entities, you know, it's, it, it makes sense, but there has to be more, right? You're losing a lot of the market. So along comes, let's take a, another example, Solana, absolutely fantastic, extremely high performance, but it is still focused on these financial, you know, it's built for an existing market. People are actually asking for Solana, but it's built for a market that has kind of emerged from Ethereum for these kind of uh, value bearing transactions. Well, now with uh, Solana, you can do them extremely rapidly and you know, at extremely low cost. So Solana is great for that. The issue with Solana, it's, the, the, um, it's product market fit is based on a user base that emerged from Ethereum. And I question whether or not, a little bit of controversy for you here. I question whether or not that is a meaningful market. It's um, certainly it's high value. But I don't see genuine economic activity. I don't see genuine production taking place on the Ethereum network or in the crypto markets in general. I would throw an asterisk on there and say that Helium is a great example of actual meaningful uh, service being produced. We might want to talk about that a bit later. But yeah, so, so anyway, 
Definity comes in and their ethos was always, we're going to build an application platform that can compete symmetrically for exactly the same users as Amazon Web Services. And the way they do that is uh, they have a whole lot more in them than just blockchain. Blockchain is a tiny, tiny component and consensus is a tiny component. The magic is the, um, the network's ability to uh, scale out an application. It's got a built-in personal information regulation compliant identity system. You know, so you could actually run um, a compliant identity system for a, 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 an organization in New Zealand or Australia on Definity and be compliant. It's actually designed to automatically fit a market outside crypto. It's extremely fast. You can store, they, we actually are just in the process of approving an expansion to the size of a web canister, which is the, it's, a, it's what Definity calls its, um, its smart contracts. The platform is the internet computer to, from four to 300 gigabytes. So you'll actually be able to run an extremely heavyweight application on Definity. And the cool thing about this is, A, it's high performance, but B, you can write for Definity in, or for the internet computer in any programming language, and it's extremely easy. So I have friends who uh, have no background in blockchain computing, and they're writing their own applications for Definity. It's totally, it's absolutely astounding. It's something we've waited for for so long, and it's finally here. And so, yeah, so, I mean, that's, that, that probably sums it up. I, I think, um, uh, oh, yeah, it can serve websites. You know, it can do everything. It's cheap to store data on. If it's you a computer, you can do anything that you can do with a computer. It, it's a world <laughs> computer, right? Like, just like Ethereum was a world computer, so, do, so is the internet computer. And thus, um, can anybody run a node? No, no. So if you think about how... Uh, you know, the, uh, the way that, you know, data is hosted in the cloud today, you use these extremely high performance, high capacity servers. The reason is you want to actually be able to serve um, high, you know, high performing um, and data intensive um, applications from those servers, right? You can't do it off a computer at home. The other thing is if you're replicating both data and computation, your consensus is limited by the slowest node in the network. So there's no, re so you really want all of your hardware to be absolutely uniform across the network because it can only run as fast as the slowest node. The other thing is if you have symmetrical hardware, it gives you greater assurances of deterministic execution, right? Like you know that a, um, a piece of software that you run on one machine will run in exactly the same way on another machine. So that's another reason why you want to have um, uh, you want to have uniform hardware. You also want it hosted in a data center with a really high, you know, high bandwidth, low latency connection to the internet. Because if someone's serving it out of their home, sure they might have fiber, but it's nothing to compare with a 100 gigabit connection in a uh, in a data center that sits atop a international cable. Definitely. So. Is it just then competing with AWS and the like, or how is that different from AWS then? Where does the decentralized part come from? Well, it's essentially just like Ethereum uh, in a lot of ways. So, you know, you do have a truly decentralized, or eventually it will be truly decentralized. Right now it's bootstrapping, but it's designed architecturally to be truly decentralized at every level. So, Governance is built into it. Um, uh, the node hardware is, you know, it can be assembled by anyone and admitted to the network using the governance system. It's plugged into, you know, data centers that anyone can um, rent and, and, and plug, uh, plug these servers in. So, you know, it's very much the same, offers a lot of the same qualities as running software on Ethereum. The catch might be that you're getting between the subnets because they, they call the shards on the internet computer subnets. So the subnet that you're running your software on, you might go for a seven replica subnet rather than a 17,000 replica, um, you know, uh, Ethereum network, right? Or you can go for higher, uh, higher replication subnets as well. But so that's like the major difference. But what you have is a mature 
well-constructed um, developer environment that can run um, modern software. It's based on WebAssembly, of course. Um, we actually, one of the team members is, you know, was involved in the development of WebAssembly. So, you know, it gives you the ability to write the kind of software you would for Amazon Web Services, but run it in an environment with, with similar uh, characteristics to uh, Ethereum. So that just sounds like sort of compelling on its own, but there's a little bit more to it. And that is that because you have a single computing environment that all the software runs on, it can all, every single application can call another application without having to go through some complicated API configuration um, or, you know, or being uh, automatically configured to, um, to, to do just that. So you've got this uh, incredible composability that again, you have on Ethereum, but you don't have like effective composability in traditional uh, cloud hosting. So that's another really great thing about it. And finally, I'd say the really awesome thing is if you look at the whole, at the way uh, applications are deployed in, let's, let's say Amazon Web Services today, you write your application, stick it in a container, pop that, load that container into an auto scaling service. You connect that auto scaling service to a load manager and then you also then you have to plug it into an auto scaling database and also a CDN. So you've got all of these components with the internet computer. You write your application, upload it, and the internet computer handles the scaling and replication of your application depending on demand. So you know it takes all of the complexities out of. Um, it takes all the complexities out of uh, applica application deployment and hosting. You don't have to worry about it. All you have to worry about as a developer is what your application does, not how it does it, which is what Dominic Williams used to say. I guess the final thing is it has a reverse gas model. So where in Ethereum, the user pays uh, by default in Definity, the canisters are preloaded with what they call cycles, which is a stable coin based on the price of computation that resembles gas. Uh, and so the actual developer pays for you to access their application, just like you would with Amazon Web Services. You can easily make it so that someone has to pay a certain number of cycles in order to access the application. So you can make it user pays if you like. But yeah, so that's, that's kind of the final major differentiator. So today, if I'm a web developer and I want to run a website, I can just go to Amazon. I can even do a WordPress website, which is what most people know how to do because it's very simple. Um, can you do the same with Definity? Is that in the roadmap if you cannot do that yet? Well, so right now, there's a few hoops you need to jump through at the moment because you need to have a um, essentially a service provider build the canister and, and do all of that kind of stuff for you. There's not a lot of user-friendly tooling. But mm -hmm. Harrison Hines, um, or Fleek, Harrison Hines is a famous name. Um, he was, we worked together at, at Consensus and he's a really lovely guy. He's got an organization called Fleek and they've been hosting, um, they've been hosting websites in a kind of Web3 environment using all different protocols. Um, most recently though, they've just started transitioning everything over to the internet computer because it's just so easy to use. So. Harrison is um, and and Fleek are uh, are right now. They're the they're the go to shop. You'd go to them and they'll stick your website up for you. Oh, that's interesting. I want to investigate that further. Yeah, it's cool, and you can just use a normal URL. It resolves into some gobbledygook that this is totally crazy. But um, there's uh, it's on the roadmap to um, to make that a little bit more conventionally comprehensible, but you can just use a regular URL and um, have it resolved to your website's address on the internet computer. And then for the user who's using a browser, it's the same experience. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that, because that is truly an internet computer. Exactly. I mean, that's the idea. Part of the vision is you want to be able to just upload your code to the internet and it just works and you don't even worry about where it is or what's going on with it. That's like what they're trying to do. And it's not there yet, but you can see that all the hard work that has been put into this thing over five years is basically there. 
So because you have to run a certain type of hardware, does that mean that Definity runs all the hardware or are there companies any, you know, in different parts of the world that are contributing to this? I don't think Definity runs any hardware. It's, um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of different node providers, yeah, that are, um, that are running, you know, running their hardware. And most of it's in the States, there's a bit throughout Europe um, and, and some in Singapore as well. There's clearly an effort to keep it close to major um, major like routing hubs, you know. Um, so Definity doesn't run the hardware, it's just conventional data centers. And one of the interesting things about it is the payout for running the hardware is just an attractive uh, number. It is denominated in ICP, which is the native token, but it's just a it's just a profitable way to run hardware in a data center. It's not some get rich quick mining thing. There's no like long term bet in that regard. It's just a um, it's just a well performing. Um, like if you were hosting um, servers for AWS, you could just host servers for Definity, and it's like you could do both. You don't have to. Yeah. Like if you're if you're a business person, if you're making that decision. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you'd get paid out in Definity, but what you'd probably do is just have some, I mean, the Definity Foundation probably um, sells that ICP and converts it into um, into dollars for the actual node provider so that they don't have to worry about it at all. Uh, that's interesting because I think, you know, that's an easy way for people who are in this space to start exploring Web3, right? It is, but it's like with this stuff, it's kind of, it's just all for the data center people. It's kind of, it's tedious and not very crypto um, <laughs> which is kind of the idea, right? Like these are just hardware providers. You, you don't want them to be, um, you don't want this to be a specialist skill. You want this to be just basic data center management. It's, it's, it's below the network layer, the layer is the physical layer. Exactly. It's layer zero. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that is awesome. So what is next for you on the plan? Are you happy with Affinity? Are you, what are you working on exactly right now? Uh, I love Affinity. Uh, I, let me rephrase that. I love the internet computer. I have a love-hate relationship with Affinity, as <laughs> do, does virtually everyone. Um, yeah, so I'm really not happy with the way Affinity is supporting the community. Um, I, they've got great comms people. But I feel like they're shackled by a kind of corporate ambition that is misplaced. Um, so I, for me, I'm going to go on the road pretty soon. I'm, I'm trying to set up a little development shop that's going to build applications for Definity. Once I'm satisfied with that, I'm going to get on the road and start doing what I did for Definity back when I worked for them. Because, you know, someone's got to sell this thing to the world. Um, and, uh, and, I, and honestly, I had such a good time doing it while I was there. You know, as that well, was um, the last time you were in Sydney. It was. Yeah, it was because after that. Yeah, well, if, yeah, because then with all the lockdowns and stuff, yeah, it was. Yeah, time goes fast when you're Doesn't locked it? down. Yeah. Although when you're actually in lockdown, it seems that it goes very slowly. <laughs> but then when <laughs> yeah. you look back, it's like, Fuck, it's been two years. You guys are in lockdown too. Yeah, we're in lockdown now. Sydney, it's like, I think... Our government has already given up on living COVID free. Everybody's just getting vaccinated as quickly as possible now. Yeah, yeah. Everybody who is in a non vax nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's For okay. The listeners, I made a face. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Like, if everybody else who isn't gets vaccinated, they'll be protected as well. So yeah. it works out in the end. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. That is cool. Okay, we're getting to the end of it. So my last final questions are, what are you reading right now? What is your favorite resource and your favorite project? Um, so right now I'm reading The Ground Beneath Her Feet by Salman Rushdie. I'm audiobooking Das Kapital. Um, have been for like six months because, man, is that thing boring, but really insightful. Awesome, actually. Everyone should audiobook Das Kapital. Don't read it. Um, unless that's your thing. But, Are you um, audio booking that in German? Uh, <laughs> no, definitely not. Okay. No. Um, but it's, uh, it's absolutely fascinating and it's, it's really helping me understand a lot about the way the world works. Um, so, yeah, so that's reading. Our favourite crypto resource, um, 
So I'm really not into this whole investment money thing. Um, I mean, hey, it pays the bills, but I'll still turn my nose up at it. But um, I really like uh, Icy Rocks, which is a great Definity Explorer. There's so much there to look at. It's really cool. Um, NFT Village is a really awesome um, kind of explorer of um, NFTs on um, the internet computer. Actually, OpenSea and these and, um, you know, these uh, any of these platforms that allow you to look at all the NFTs out there, I think are really exciting. Uh, my favorite one to look at, though, is the Helium, which we didn't talk about at all, the uh, Helium Explorer, uh, because the Helium Explorer shows you where all these hotspots are cropping up around the world. Um, Helium's this cryptocurrency. The idea is that it's you're incentivized to run these um, uh, long-range, low-power Wi-Fi routers, essentially, and they are basically trying to build a new telecommunications provider. And they've got 150,000 of these things deployed around the world, 40,000 in the last month. And it's so cool to watch them pop up. It's also, that's my favorite project in terms of real world application. We didn't really come here to talk about Helium, but everyone should go check it out. I, I will because I have not heard about this. So it's cool. that it's sounds the very coolest thing. It is the coolest thing in crypto, I reckon, right now. All right. I might even reach out to the Helium people and get them here to talk about it. And um, favorite resource, favorite project. Okay, so we covered everything. Yeah, awesome. and I used headphones for the call, so we're through all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate having you here. You've been my inspiration to do podcasting, so thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. It's such a good thing to do. It is indeed. And you get to, you know, meet and talk to a lot of cool people that are doing excellent things. I couldn't agree more. But let's wrap this up and then let's have a have a one-on-one -on -one catch up as well. So thanks for being here. Thanks for inviting me on the podcast, Adriana. Um, absolute pleasure. Awesome. Thank you. And that was the vivacious and inspirational Arthur Falls. His podcasts are called Beyond Bitcoin, The Ether Review and The Third Web. I'm sure you would be easy to find them on the internet. Get in touch with Arthur with questions about Definity. Links are on the description for you. As usual, say hi. I love hearing from you as well. Thanks for coming along on yet another journey with me. And I will see you on the next block. Bye.